my name is Jobin. Thanks for thanks for thinking about the little guys because the little course. guys have questions too, right? Yeah. Of um, course. Um, so let's start off this way, because uh, I know I know you you get the same round of questions and you're like, eh. I'm gonna throw you I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some curveballs at you because I think that's that's important, right? Okay. Because sure. because because genuine is what we want. Yeah. Uh, when you come back home. Like, what's the site, or like, what do you see? Like, what's the landmark that you're like, okay, I'm back home now. Well, what is it probably in North Texas? Or when is I it North Texas? When I get on the 360, for sure, that's when it's like, it feels like home. And also in Texas, like you can see so much of the sky. And that is something I always remember because the land is so flat. So the 360, and the sky is the one thing that's just home for me because you can just see so much of it. 360 going through where? Um, so usually from DFW down to Mansfield. So I'll go through like right around Division for sure. I think of home right there as well because that's where my I would get off on the exit to go to church on Sunday. So that's something that, you know, it's a big landmark for me that reminds me of home. Oh, and whenever, which is so sad that Cowboys closed, but always driving down and being able to see Cowboys was something that was also a landmark. And it's devastating that that closed. I got you. I got you. And it was devastating for, to a lot of people around here. Yeah. Mm. Um, you, would you consider yourself a North Texan? I know, you, I know your family is all throughout Texas, but yeah. man, you spent some time in Ar Arlington and yeah, I, I'm more of like a, a Waco kind of a girl. That was more of Texas for me, a lot of my experiences. But yeah, I would say I'm a, a North Texan for sure. Yeah, I'm uh, both. It, you're both. It, you can be both. Um, let's talk about Black Like Me. Okay. Yeah. I heard the song like a month ago and I'm like, holy crap, how come nobody knows who knows this song or heard about this song? A friend told me about it. And I'm sure you get the same candid questions about about it, right? Yeah. What are you are you tired of answering questions about it or, or or no? No, I you know especially now in the time that we're in, it it was a lot harder before to ask answer a lot of questions about it before because the topic of race was such a fresh matter and it was always like talking about my experiences with racism and that was something that was constantly hard to talk about because you have to like relive it every single time that you talk about it. And that's not something that you always wanna, wanna do is relive that. It's something a lot of us probably bury behind us and wanna keep moving forward. And then to have to talk about that all the time was really hard. Why do you think that song resonates with so many people? Well, I think it resonates with a lot of people because it's so many people's story, you know, um, being a minority, period, whether you're black or any race that is not white, we've all experienced some form of, of marginalization in this country. And the fact that I can say that and know that most people that are minority are going to be able to nod their head and say yes is really sad. And, and I think that's what resonates. I think it's such a beautiful song. I think the melodies, I think the hope, all of it resonates with so many people because it's so right now with what is happening in this world, even though it's been happening since before you and I were even born. Yeah. For some reason, once the world stopped, people were able to hear it and hear it differently. Did you feel like the pandemic may have given people, given you that voice too, to a certain extent? Unfortunately, yes. I hate that it had to be a pandemic. I hate that. I think also seeing back-to-back -back deaths of Ahmad Arbery. I mean, we saw that man get hunted down in broad daylight in Georgia. Um, hearing about Breonna Taylor and 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 then watching the I only could see 30 minutes of the video of George Floyd. I, I haven't even fully watched it. It was just too difficult for me to see, but watching those three deaths back to back, like within like a couple of months span, I think that also enabled people to be able to hear it differently. And that sucks for me. It's sad that it took somebody's 
death for people to be able to hear the song differently. And, and keep in mind, in your hometown, you have a Tatiana Jefferson and Botham Jean. Yeah. What do you feel? And I, and I wrote the song, um, Black Like Me, I wrote this song a year ago, over a year ago. And it was after watching those murders and, and reading about it and seeing these people like that could have been my brother, that could have been my father. And, and seeing that I was, I was feeling the pain then. I was feeling the hurt that so many people are feeling that are not necessarily black. I mean, we were feeling that <laughs> forever ago, you know, this isn't new. And here I'm thinking I'm going to see all this hate and looking at the comments and the reviews and all this other stuff. I was but scared of it too. <laughs> you were scared of it? Mm -hmm. What were you scared of? I was prepared for that. At one point in time, there is even discussion at my label to get possible security just in case too many people were really upset about it. So I was really scared. And that was something that I, I couldn't believe that people were discussing security for little old me. Like I, I'm just, I just wrote a song, you know, there's people like Gary Chambers Jr. That's a true activist that is on ground zero fighting for the rights of black people. And I just wrote a song and they're talking about security. And that was really, really scary. And um, just reading some of the comments, people said, listen, I might not resonate with the black part of that song, but I could insert poor like me or yeah. um, uh, disabled like me or uneducated like me. And does the, did, did the job do it? Did the, did the song do its job then you think? Yeah, absolutely. When we were writing the song in the bridge, it says, and I know I'm not the only one who feels like they don't belong. Like that was specifically written for that very reason, because I know that I'm not the only one that feels this way. There's people in the LBGTQIA plus community that feel like that. There are Armenian people that feel like that. There are Mexicans that feel like that. Like I know I'm not the only one and I wanted to acknowledge that in the song. Um, just looking at the, at, the, at, the, at the quote here, if you think you live in the land of the free, you know, and then you top it off with, you should try to live black yeah. like me. I mean, you wrote that, right? Yeah. Um, freedom isn't all that free for some people. No, it's not. It's not. Um, let's talk about your parents. Uh, my hope is, and your dad is awesome, by the way. Your dad's Isn't the one. Who, your dad's the one who hooked this up. <laughs> uh, Good old Mike. I'm hoping to connect with him. I'm hoping to connect with him later this week. Yeah. Um, tell me about the, their influence, your parents. Well, I grew up in a very, you know, Christian household. And I grew up and I was taught not to judge people by the color of their skin. And even in my household, I, would, I had to go to private schools at one point and my whole family did at one point in our life because the neighborhood we lived in, the public school system that we were in did not want black kids at their school. So I've been dealing with this kind of stuff all of my life, but my parents never taught us to hate. And my dad has taught me, both my parents have taught me to, to fight for what I believe, but respect other people and love on other people. So a lot of this newfound activism in me, I'm just wanting equality and love for all. Like it's that simple. It's just wanting everybody to be treated fairly. I don't want, I'm pregnant. I'm gonna have a son one day, very soon, <laughs> in like a few months. and. And I don't want to have to send my kid off to a different school so he doesn't get discriminated against. So I don't want to have that talk with my son if he ever gets pulled over by law enforcement. That's something I really hope I don't have to do. 
which is why I'm out here and talking and singing about this now that maybe it can inspire people to want to change that so that our children don't have to go through that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You know, I had a chance to talk with Willie Nelson, who um, has been very open uh, about his his take and his stance. And his answer is quite blunt. And I apologize for me saying it this way. I said, do you feel like you're alienating your audience being in country? And his answer was, <laughs> was his answer. And I apologize. I had to say that. No, no, don't and I ask you that same question. Do you feel Looking at when you look at the at the, at the, at the at country music, um, do you feel like you're alienating your audience with your music? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, country music is three chords in the truth. It was singing about real life, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And if certain people don't like what I have to say than what Willie Nelson said. But I'm, I'm here to, it's not all about them. If anything, I'm bringing more diversity into the country music audience and letting people that look like me feel that they can sing country music and be accepted. And that is my whole goal and purpose is to make this genre more inclusive. So I'm not alienating, alienating anybody. Are we there? Is country music there yet? I mean, if you, I've got to be honest. Um, if you look on the country music charts right now, that alone will tell you, no, we're not there yet. But I do know that there are people within the industry white people that are relentlessly working to change that. And I'm standing with them in trying to create and open opportunities and get them to hire more people of color, hire more people from diverse backgrounds to make it more inclusive. And that includes behind the scenes, that includes in front of the scenes. So it's a, we're not there yet. I don't know, we may not ever see that um, while I'm still singing, but I will tell you this, even past that, I will still be fighting for this. Fighting for what? Fighting for diversity in country music, fighting for that little black girl that wants to sing country music, but doesn't have any opportunities that doesn't think that she could ever sing country music and get to walk in that door. I am the vessel. I am the door for her to walk through so that she can get her opportunity. What was, what was your biggest influence in music? My biggest influence was Dolly Parton and Whitney Houston were two of my, and Leon Rhymes. those were some big influences for me in country music. Not a bad group, not a yeah. bad, what do you want to tell your, I only got like two minutes. What, yeah. what, do you want, what do you want to tell your people up here in North Texas? I want to tell my people in North Texas that I am so grateful for them so thankful for them because that's part of why I am who I am today. And I also asked them to stand with me in this fight to have country music be more inclusive. And that includes for women as well. As much as I'm standing here fighting for people of color, I'm also fighting for women, period. If you look on the country music charts today, you may see two or three women in the top 30 out of all of those people, there's only three women. That is a problem. And so I'm fighting for people of color and I'm fighting for women and white women in, as well, so. Who are you singing for? I'm singing for, I used to be singing for myself, for sure. I was all trying to write and sing for myself, but now I'm singing for black people I'm singing for marginalized people. I'm singing for women. I'm singing for the LBGTQIA plus community. I'm singing for everybody. I'm singing that, for, yeah, everybody. When did that, when did that start? That started, man, I wanna say about a couple of years ago, I really changed my frame of thinking. I had a really honest conversation with my husband and I asked him, I was like, I said, why, you know, why doesn't country music work for you? Is it working for me? And he said, 
because you're running away from everything that makes you different. And that right there was just like, whoa, like I was writing everybody else's song and I wasn't writing my song within country music. So I've started using my own experiences and that includes being a woman, that includes being a black woman. And I started writing about that and then writing about what I'm seeing in the world right now, you know, using, they say, shut up and sing because they don't like what we have to say. So I put a cool melody to it and put it in a song and maybe they'll hear me. <laughs> if someone if, if someone were to come up to your face and say, shut up and sing, what do you yeah. tell them? What do you tell them? Man, there's a lot of things I would tell them. I would, I'm trying to learn not to fight anger with anger. But my first thought would be like Willie Nelson. But it's also one of those things where, are they bothered? I hope so. Like I wanna bother them as much as possible. I wanna, sh I wanna sing so many songs that bother them because that means I'm doing the right thing. And if they're upset about it, it means you're doing the right thing. Like it can't be all butterflies and rainbows all the time. That is not life. That is not life right now for anybody. You know, we're stuck in our houses right now, you know? And I don't know. I don't exactly know what I would say to them, to be honest. I love it. <laughs> it I, I know your time is precious. I really appreciate you spending some time with us. Of course, of you're, course. You're, you used to say you're, you're pregnant. How, how, um, how much longer? Six I'm six months pregnant. So. Six months in, awesome. The reason I'm holed up in my little guest room here is because I got three little ones and I can't have them. Uh, come. I'm terrified. So give me all your pointers. Hey, 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 you you have my contact now. Okay. Pleasure. Thank you. Represent country music. Um, you're 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 awesome and you're an inspiration. And I appreciate it. Keep Thanks. doing. Keep being you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you.